What's up everybody welcome back in this question we're given f of x is negative bracket x plus 3 squared minus 2 where the domain is restricted to x being in between negative 4 and 0 and we have to find number one the domain and range of f of x the inverse and then the domain and range of the inverse so whenever you're given a function with a restricted domain what i recommend is always making a table of values with that restricted domain. So here's the function that we're given, and we're gonna make a table of values from negative four to zero. So we got negative four, let's do negative three, negative two, negative one, and then zero. Plugging in negative four here, <clears throat> negative four plus three is negative one, negative one squared is one, times negative one is negative one minus two gives us negative three. If we plug in negative three for x, we'd have zero squared, this whole thing would be zero minus two, that would give us negative two. If we plug in negative two for x, we would end up having a uh, negative three again. If we plug in negative 1 for x, negative 1 plus 3 gives us uh, 2. 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 minus 2 gives us negative 6. If we plug in 0, we'd have 9. Negative 9 minus 2 gives us negative 11. Right? So that there is the table for this function. And the domain is restricted, so that means the range is going to be restricted as well. And notice that this function here has a vertex at negative 3 and negative 2, which is part of the table, which is nice. So if we take this table and uh, graph it, let me think about how to set up this graph best. I think it would be best to set it up like this. Okay, so um, negative four and negative three would be like uh, over here. Then we have negative three, negative two, which is uh, up here. Negative two, negative three here. Negative one, negative six here. And then zero and negative 11 over here. So this is a parabola that just looks like that. Right, so it's not a full parabola because again, its domain is restricted between negative four and zero. So that means its range is restricted as well. Notice that its range is gonna go from this y value, the highest y value, to this y value, the lowest y value. And the highest y value here, it's gonna be negative two, basically the y value of the vertex. The vertex is at negative three, negative two which means the y value, the lowest y value is gonna be negative 11, right? So from here, we can write out the domain and the range. The domain is gonna be x e r, but x has to be between negative four and zero. And the range is going to be y er. And then the y values, notice they're between negative 11. So the y values have to be greater than or equal to negative 11, but less than or equal to negative 2. <clears throat> right? So that's the domain and range for the function. So whenever you're given a function with a restricted domain, my recommendation make a table, graph it, so then you can visually see how the range is restricted as well. Getting this restriction on the range, that's the tricky part of the question. We already know the domain is restricted. It's getting the restrictions on the range and it's best to see it visually. So now moving on to number two, we gotta find the inverse and then the domain and range of the inverse. And the domain and range actually of the inverse is just gonna be these uh, domain and range is interchanged because that's how we know the domain and range of a function and inverse relate. But I'm gonna show it to you fully how it looks like through a table visually and then we'll uh, state the domain and range. So notice that the function 
it's a parabola. It's already given in vertex form, which is nice. So all we want to do at this point is just interchange the x and y. So we'll have x equals negative y plus 3 squared minus 2. And then uh, from here, you just want to isolate for that y. So you bring the negative 2 over. So we'll have x plus 2, divide both sides by the negative 1 in front, equals y plus 3 squared. So then we square root both sides. Like that. So that there represents the um, equation for the inverse. So if we rewrite that up here, That's how it looks like. So that's the equation of the inverse. However, it's not going to be fully this because, again, the function was restricted. It means the inverse is going to be restricted as well. So what we can do at this point is we can actually just take the table for the function and write out the table for the inverse by just interchanging the x and y. So this negative 4, negative 3 will turn into negative 3, negative 4. This would be negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 2, negative 6, negative 1, and then we'd have negative 11 and uh, 0. So this here, vertex. So I always like to label the vertex on the inverse as well, even though it's going to be a sideways parabola. I like to know where that sideways parabola begins. So negative 2, negative 3. So let's draw out a graph for this. So negative 2, negative 3. Let's say that's like uh, over here. And then we'll have negative 3, negative 4, which would be like, uh, let's say over here. Negative 3, negative 2. That would be there negative 6, negative 1, that's like here, and then uh, negative 11, 0, that's like there, let's say. So connecting all these, again, you could take these out and draw them out on graph paper. This is just a rough sketch of this, but uh, the most important point is this one here, negative 2, negative 3. So from here, we could figure out what's the domain and range of this graph here. Well, starting with the domain, we got x, e, r. But what are the x values going to be in between? Well, notice the furthest x value is this one here, which is at negative 11, right? Because this point here is negative 11 and 0. And then up to this x value, which is negative 2. So we know the x values have to be greater than or equal to negative 11, but less than or equal to negative 2. What about the range? Well, the y values are going to be fluctuating from this point all the way down to this point. And this point has a y value of 0. This point has a y value of negative 4. That's the lowest y value. So the range is y, e, r. And then uh, all the y values are going to be greater than, or no, all the y values are going to be greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than or equal to 0, right? Greater than negative 4, but less than 0. And that is the domain and range for the inverse. And notice, how does it relate to the domain and range of the function? Well, it's just interchange. The domain, the x values were between negative 4 and 0. The range of the inverse, between negative 4 and 0. The range of the function was between negative 11 and negative 2. Domain of the inverse, between negative 11 and negative 2. Right? So that is the answer to 2 and 3. 2 is that up there, and then number 3 
is this down here. We didn't have to do all this work. We could have just switched this up, but I wanted to show it to you visually as well, right? So if the domain is restricted for a parabola, again, the trick is finding how the range is going to be restricted. And my suggestion, the way to do that, make a table, graph it out, and then visually get the restrictions on the domain. And then uh, the inverse is pretty easy from there. Everything is just interchanged.